Good morning and welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Arlington. Today is Sunday, August 14th, and my name is Ashley Grieve. I'm one of two new members this year to the UUCA Board of Trustees. UUCA is an intentionally welcoming congregation to people of all backgrounds, races, genders, sexual and romantic orientations, and abilities. Note the word intentionally, intentionally welcoming. It has never been enough to say that we are a welcoming congregation. If it were that easy, would any congregation describe themselves as unwelcoming? Good morning and welcome. We're a standoffish bunch. <laughs> I don't think so. So this morning, if you're a standing member or a friend of UUCA, I have two asks of you. First, please make a point to actively welcome new faces in person or online, because that's how we invite folks to be in community with us. And secondly, please give some thought to the requests from Leanne Williams and our RE committee, who were standing outside on the ramp this morning and sharing information on becoming a religious education teacher. We're in need of teachers for kindergarten through seventh grade at both 915 and 1115 services starting in a couple of weeks. You know those words we say every Sunday about time, talent, and treasure? Well, this is a time and talent opportunity. People think that you have to have kids to be an RE teacher, but I'm a youth advisor and I don't have kids, so I'm inviting you to, uh, to join myself and the RE committee and, and believe in investing in our youth. So just consider joining us and sharing a little bit of yourself this year. Here's Leanne as well, two thumbs up. If you're a newcomer, welcome. On any given day, who we are and what we stand for is a reflection in part of who shows up. Today, you're a part of that kaleidoscope of community that makes up who we are, and we appreciate you being here and participating. I hope today's service inspires you, challenges you, and heals you. And as always, you can continue the conversation with us at our coffee hour, which will be outside the doors and to the left following the service. Thank you for joining us today, and again, welcome. Ashley, thank you so much for that beautiful welcome and welcome to you to the Board of Trustees. It is always exciting at the beginning of a new program year to see the team that will lead the congregation forward. Our call to worship this morning comes from my colleague, Unitarian Universalist Minister Joan Javier Duval, who serves in Vermont. She titles this lay it down and i want to invite you before i share these words to take a breath here here is where you can lay it down lay down all that you have carried the weight of the world that has rounded your back leaving you aching and exhausted. Here, here is where healing begins, where burdens are set down and alongside one another's, their magnitude does not seem as great. Here, here is where the door is thrown open and the light can lift away the shadows and what was hidden can now be seen. Here, here is where you can rest, where nothing is expected, but that you bring all of who you are into the presence of this holy and this loving community. Here, let us worship together. Good morning. My name is David McTaggart, and I'm honored to be serving as a worship associate this morning. As is our practice, we light a candle of compassion, a candle to acknowledge the sorrows, the joys, blessings, and concerns 
that we may be bringing with us into this place of worship this morning. First, as many of you are, we're delighted to have this warm, bright sunshine and cool weather that feels so good and refreshing. But we're concerned too about the violence, the uh, attack on the Four Courts pub here in Arlington this past week. Heartened to learn that uh, Salman Rushdie is making progress in recovering from the knife attack this week. Salman Rushdie being the author of the Satanic Verses. But my list of sorrows seem to be ever present and growing. Na na globally, fire, flood, starvation, loneliness, rage, and despair. But my joy again is to come here. I come here to be with you at this hour in this place of quiet sanctuary. I come here to be inspired by your presence, your smiles, your warm touch. I come here to be reassured that I am not alone, that despite it all, life is good. So I light this candle. We gather together as a community of memory and hope to celebrate life and its infinite possibilities for love. We, we light, light this, this chalice, chalice as, as a symbol, symbol of the light, the light within, within every, every human, human heart. heart. May our individual, individual sparks meet and, and merge, bringing both light and warmth to the world. world.
it at my wedding. So it has a special place in my heart, and it reminds me what it is that we are doing here together. Why did we all show up this morning in person or online? What does it mean to be here? So I'm hoping that I have some folks who could help me answer that question. But first, I want to ask Leanne Williams, our Director of Lifespan Faith Development, to come up. Leanne is going to introduce someone who is gathering with us for the first time today. Maybe we'll be able to help her understand what that gathering means too. So. Wonderful. Welcome to those of you I haven't seen in a while. And you get to be with us today um, to offer a very special welcome to Kate Emerson. She is our new ARI assistant. Yay! Yay! And her role here at UUCA will be to create that welcoming, warm, supportive space for our children to gather, for our teachers, our volunteers to gather, so we can all be here together to celebrate once again. Wonderful. Well, Kate, since it is your first time with us, I wonder if there might be some folks here who could help Kate and maybe remind Leanne, in case she's forgotten, though that seems unlikely, why it is that we are here at church today. So I'm going to invite you to come on over with me if you'd like, and I'll invite anybody who particularly and see if you can help me to explain to Kate what it is that we are doing here. So I'm going to sit down here, let's see, so we can all just kind of have a seat together. Anybody else want to come up and join? Oh, good. Come on up. Want to sit down? I love that mask has stars on it, I think, doesn't it? Oh, nice. Oh, and a rainbow shirt. We are surrounded by stars and rainbows. So let's see, Kate is new here today and she is wondering why is it that we come to church here in this building and what do we do while we are here? Does anyone here on the chancel have an idea of what we do when we are here in this space? Hmm. What do you think? Yes, confer, that's good. Oh, we might have someone else who can help us answer too. We'll see. Any ideas about what we do when we're in this space together? Do you think we should ask the grown-ups who are sitting out here, see if they have ideas? Anybody here have an idea of what we do when we are in this space together? Oh yes, what do you think? We sing together. Well, that seems like it's true, yes. What else do we do when we're in this space? We worship together, yes. What else do we do? Yeah, all the way in the back, Nancy. We see our friends when we are in this building, that's right. Anybody else? Yes, Joanna. Say it louder for me. Mourn, we mourn together. That's right. Sometimes we mourn together when we, when we are sad, when we've lost someone, we come into this space to mourn together and be sad with each other. Barbara. We learn together. So let me ask, have you done any of those things in this space, do you think? Have you ever sung? No. <laughs> have you ever sung in this space? I have. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And have you ever learned in this space? I have, for sure, every Sunday, actually. Oh, yes, also here on the chancel. And have you ever been sad in this space? And maybe someone can not help you feel better, maybe, but just be with you when you're sad. That's happened to me here at church. So, Kate, I think those are some of the things that we do when we are together and some of the reasons that we come to this place on Sunday morning. Anyone have anything else to add? Yes? We covenant together, that's right, absolutely. We make, we make promises to each other about how we wanna be with each other. 
And sometimes we do have ice cream together also. That, that's an important part of church. Oh yes, what would you like to add? Just, was that just a hand up for ice cream? Yeah, 100%, hand up for ice cream. Everybody loves having ice cream together. Well, today we'll be singing together and learning together. I don't know that there's ice cream today, but there'll be ice cream again soon, never fear. I have a strong theological commitment to ice cream. So there we go, perfect. So I think that Leanne and Kate can help us go to our classes if we are heading off to classes, if we are learning or teaching in those classes. Sometimes the same person does both, I notice. And Sai and Sophia will help us sing you on your way. Peace to you. Today we are talking about how we find inspiration. And I don't know about you, but before I can let inspiration come into me, I need to quiet down, to center down, as the theologian Howard Thurman put it. So I want to invite you in this time of prayer and meditation to quiet down with me. Take a breath, if you will. Let it out. Reverend Joan, in our opening, said this was the place we lay it down. Gather up what you are carrying. Lay it down. Take a breath with me again, if you will. And let it out. Feeling your body sink into this space. Notice how it feels to sit in the pew or the chair. Close your eyes if you're comfortable or soften your gaze. Notice how you feel yet more fully. Settle into this space. Bring your awareness to those around you. Simply notice that they are there in the house or in the sanctuary, over the internet, present with you. As you notice yourself in the space and the people around you, send a wave of love. Make sure you catch that wave, let it settle over your body, surrounding you. And then let it ripple out a little love to everyone near you. A little love beyond these walls. A little love 
traveling around the world. Breathe in with me. Breathe out. May that spirit of love continue to wash over you and to ripple out in our time together. May it be so. The Reverend, the Reverend A. Powell Davies <clears throat> was the senior minister at All Souls Church Unitarian in Washington, D.C. from 1944 to 1957. As such, he was instrumental in the founding of our church, UUCA, in 1948. But let me tell you, he wrote, let me tell you why I come to church. I come to church because I fail, I fail to follow my own standards and need to be constantly brought back to them. I'm afraid of becoming selfish and indulgent in my church, my church of the free spirit, but my church brings me back to what I want to be. I could easily despair, doubt and dismay could overwhelm me but my church renews my courage and my hope. I must have my conscience sharpened, sharpened until it goads me to the most thorough and responsible thinking of which I am capable. I must feel again the love that I owe to others. I must not only hear about it, but feel it. In church, I do, I do feel it. I am brought toward my best in every way toward my best. You see, I need to be reminded that there are things I must do in the world, unselfish things, things undertaken at the level of idealism. In contrast, workaday enthusiasms are not enough. They wear out too soon. I want to experience human nature at its best 
and to be reminded of its highest possibilities. And this happens to me in church. In some ways, in some ways, the soul is never lonelier than during a church service. Yet it is a loneliness that has a strength in it. Perhaps it is because the innermost solitude of the human heart is in some paradoxical way a thing that can be shared, that must be shared. We meet each other as friends and neighbors anywhere and everywhere throughout the week, but we seldom do so in the consciousness of our souls, in the consciousness of our soul's deepest learning, yearnings. But in church, we do. We do in a way that protects us from all that is intrusive, yet leaves us knowing that we have all the same yearnings, the same spiritual loneliness, the same need of assurance and faith and hope. We are not merely an audience. We are a congregation. And we unite. We unite in the best of truth and life's own loveliest hopes and visions and for the reinforcement of our dedication to the service of our fellow human beings. But I come to church also to be cleansed. After a week's life, even as a minister of a church, there are residual thoughts in mood that I want to lose. I doubt whether I could possibly explain what it is in a church service that gives me a feeling of restored cleanliness, but something does. I come to church, too, to be refreshed and comforted, not in a cheap or easy way, far from it, but by feeling once again that in the mystery of human life, with all its perils, pains, fears, that something answers the cry in our hearts. I doubt whether I could stand the thought I doubt whether I could stand the thought of the cruelty and misery of the present world, its agony and its torment, unless I could know through an experience that renewed itself over and over again, that at the heart of life there is an assurance, an assurance that I can hold an ultimate belief that all is well. Life must have its sacred moments and its holy places. We need the infinite, the limitless, the uttermost, all that can give a heart this deep and strengthening peace. We need religion with its faith and purpose. We need it as experience. We need the touch of beauty, the touch of beauty bringing back to life its luster and loveliness. We need the unutterable communion of our spirits with the spirit of the highest, the spirit of the highest, all that joins the souls with what it yearns for, all that can raise the frailty of our incomplete humanity towards the, towards the level of the spirit's aspirations, aspirations that our earthly dust may meet and mingle with the majesty and the mystery of God. May we ponder and hold these words in our hearts. Each Sunday we are given the opportunity to share our generosity with others to help build beloved community beyond our walls. <clears throat> Through the month of August, we give 70% of our Sunday offering to Culpeper Garden. Culpeper Garden, an award-winning nonprofit senior residence reserved exclusively for low-income adults age 62 and older. Culpeper Garden, located a few blocks from here, was met, founded by members of our congregation in 1969. It now operates independently of UUCA with its own board and governance structure. 
Culver, Culpeper Garden has 346 units, including 73 assisted living units. The latter, the latter units were opened in the year 2000 as the nation's first HUD subsidized assisted living residence. They remain the only such facility in Arlington. Culpeper Garden reserves 30 of these assisted living apartments for indigent seniors, people who cannot afford even the already subsidized fees for their care. No Virginia or federal subsidy is available for the meals and personal care of the care portion of assisted living charges. With partial support from Arlington County, Culpeper Garden must raise $125,000 each year to cover the personal care costs of these 30 residents. Our share of the plate donations made today and throughout the, the month of August will go towards supporting of these indigent seniors. There are many ways to give other than dropping cash or a check into the basket as it comes around shortly. You may give through our website, by text, by PayPal, or by mailing a check. Whenever paying by a check, do word, place the words pledge or share the plate in the memo line. You'll find detail, detailed instructions in your order of service. So remember that 70% of our gift goes directly to support injured and seniors at Culpeper Garden and 30% goes to the ongoing mission of our church. Please give as generously as you're able. Your offering will now be received. Please join me in blessing our offering, words of unison, reading are in your order of service. We bless and receive these gifts, opening our hearts to true generosity. The time, talent, or treasure brings us joy. Let us be grateful for our needs. 
and be with you. To teach us how to receive in community and love. Let's be grateful for those who share their gifts with us. It is a blessing to make a difference together. David, thank you for bringing those words of A. Powell Davies to us. Sai and Sophia, that is another of my favorite hymns. It's just sort of Amanda's hit week. And thank all of you for your giving. You know, as we hear about why we come to church, we then have an opportunity to act it out, I think, as we give to Culpeper Gardens. This August, Rev. CTC and I have um, chosen to do a kind of sermon series, which started last Sunday and continues through next Sunday, and then a sort of wrap-up on the 28th when I'll do a question-and-answer sermon. You'll have a chance to send in the questions, and I'll have a chance to make up some answers, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> We are over these three weeks riffing off of a mission statement that the board created a couple of years ago, a mission statement that took UUCA's original statement of connect, grow, serve, and expanded it in some ways to come for community, that's the connect part, and find inspiration, that's the grow part, and then live with purpose. That, I think, is the serve part. Come for community, find inspiration, live with purpose. You may have heard those words from board members over the last year or two, but this is the first time we have really explored them in community together. Last week, Rev. CTC engaged with the concept of coming for community and asked us to consider what it meant to show up for each other, to create beloved community in this congregation. And next week, we will look at the idea of living with purpose. You'll hear from me and also from a couple of UUCA members who themselves are seeking to live with purpose, whatever that means to them in their lives. And so this week, then, we have find inspiration, the middle part of the statement, which surely, as I think about it, is my job, right? <laughs> Here you come on Sunday morning, making your way through the door, walking or rolling or logging on from home or even watching after the fact, that's all right. But you show up, you've done your part, here you are, and now, well, let's go, David and Reverend Amanda. Where's the inspiration? <laughs> One of the most common questions that I get when I encounter folks who have never been in a Unitarian Universalist congregation or experienced a Unitarian Universalist service, or perhaps even heard of Unitarian Universalism, which happens on a regular basis. One of the most common questions that I get from folks is something like, well, how do you decide what to talk about? How do you, as the minister, in other words, know what you're supposed to say on Sunday? Those folks might be familiar with a more traditional Christian church where a lectionary is followed, or certainly within the Jewish tradition, there's a particular passage from the Torah that's shared each week on a cycle through the year. And they wonder, and sometimes on Saturday night I also wonder, <laughs> if you don't have that, if you don't have a lectionary letting you know what it is, the topic of the week should be, how do you figure out what people need to hear or what you want to say or anything in between those two? 
ultimately, I think, well, of course, I have lots of answers. I mean, you can imagine. I say, oh, will I sort of listen to what people are talking about and what is on their hearts and what I think they might need to explore together? Or, oh, we have these themes that come from soul matters, and that gives us kind of a, a broad way to look at the month. Or, oh, we have elements in our liturgical year, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I read the newspapers and see what's happening in the world. All those things are true. But ultimately, I think the question is based in a, in a different understanding of sort of the, the impulse of religion. In a Unitarian Universalist setting, the impulse of religion, the, the spiritual impulse as we come together, the reason we gather is us. Now, you may be familiar with humanism as a, a strain of Unitarian Universalism, right? That some Unitarian Universalists are humanist, and some are theist, and some are agnostic, and some are Christian, and some are Buddhist, and all of that, again, is true. And it is also true, I believe, at least, that humanism, that is the grounding of religious experience, the grounding of spiritual exploration in the human experience of the world. That is at the underpinning of Unitarian Universalism across the board, that even those of us who are theist or Christian or Jewish or Buddhist Unitarian Universalists, we also have an understanding of humanism at its core the idea of human experience as central, we hold that as a, an interlacing, an underpinning, a braiding through of our religious experience. And so in the most fundamental way then, you are the text. You, all of you gathered and and you beyond our walls, and you throughout the world, you humanity, and you the individual beloved human person, you are the text of our congregational life together. Now what do I mean by that, you are the text, certainly sounds like a ministry thing to say, Every once in a while, my father calls me out for talking too much like a minister, and then I have to, like, dial back the words, you know. Yesterday, some of us here in this room and others gathered for a memorial service for one of those times when we come together in community to mourn together, to be sad, and also to sing and tell stories and remember. Yesterday's memorial service was for Dorothy Mulligan, a matriarch of this congregation. Not quite a founder time-wise, but oh, a founder in heart, I think, in many ways. A founder, certainly, of much of who we are now. And it was all the things that memorial services so often are. It was stories of her life and memories from her children and her beloved and loving husband, Jean. And then memories from people who knew her in different settings. And so a life was built before us as we gathered together, the stories woven together to tell the chapters of Dorothy's life. Afterward, when people were having cake and tea and punch and telling more stories, more than one person said to me, I was so inspired. Maybe, also, I was a little intimidated. <laughs> what a life! That life was the text for inspiration yesterday at the memorial service. We came away from it not with a surety of what happens after death, but instead an inspiration for how to live now, how the rest of us might be changed through the text of someone's life. But I don't want to lead you to think that the only texts that matter, the only ones that inspire, 
are those of lives that seem, at least in retrospect, to be beautiful and successful and wonderful. We find inspiration, too, in the challenges of our lives, in the broken places, the struggles that are present with us, as well as the ones that we have overcome. I'll add a caveat here that I don't mean the kind of inspiration that we sometimes see on Facebook, occasionally referred to as inspiration porn, and often including people who are disabled, as though going through life because you carry a set of challenges makes you a kind of object for other people's inspiration. What I wish we were inspired by in those cases as we look at those, those of us especially who are able-bodied at this time, would be to create change in the world so that the system of society might be more open for people who travel in the world in many different ways. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and yet, and yet there is a kind of inspiration any one of us might find in the resilience of the human heart, the resilience of the human spirit in our own lives and in the lives of those around us. We'll see if I can find the resilience of this uh, document and where I think I am. <laughs> How does that happen, I wonder? If we are the text in Unitarian Universalism, if a human life, if human life overall, if the resilience of the human heart is the text from which I preach or from which our choir sings or from which our own silent meditation springs in our hearts, if we are the text, how do we find it? Where do we read it? Linda Badalini, I didn't warn you, Linda, that I was going to talk about you in this sermon, but oh well. Linda Badalini, uh, who serves on the board now as vice chair, was president of the board for the last several years. And so many of you will have perhaps a memory of Linda at this lectern, just as Ashley was this morning, offering the board welcome. Linda often in her welcome has a phrase where she describes that some of us here in this congregation find inspiration in the great books, some in the great outdoors, and others in great conversations. Did I get it right, Linda? Oh, good. See, I can't expect you to listen to my sermons if I don't listen to your words, too. What I like about this phrase, which I have heard how many times in the last two years, is that it indicates that inspiration doesn't just float down to us without us having to do anything at all, but rather that there is some engagement needed, that we have to pick up the book and read it, or get outside and notice, or perhaps most important here, talk with each other. Last week, Rev. CTC called us to be a community of care with each other, to show up for each other, to let each other in when we are struggling. This runs counter in so many ways to the culture around us that tells us to be islands all on our own. And as I thought about this sermon and began to think about the one for next week, I realized that perhaps come for community, find inspiration, live with purpose. We're not three separate statements attached together by commas, but rather a whole sentence, something where you needed to start at the beginning and continue through before you got to the end. Surely we need to come for community in order to find inspiration. If we are the text of this religious community, we must first know each other in deep and meaningful ways.
to be able to read that text, to find the inspiration that comes in the lives we live, beautiful and terrible, joyful and tragic, the inspiration that comes in the text of our lives. Now, of course, that inspiration may also come to us, as Linda tells us, through great books, and, and never quite the same ones. We all know that Unitarian Universalism allows for the sacred to enter in through many different sources, through different religious traditions, through the trees and the cycles of the earth, through the stars, the same hymn that transports me today may be one that leaves you cold. The poem that breaks your heart open may be one I struggle to understand. And that too is a source of inspiration. That a community with so many different backgrounds and beliefs chooses to move together through the world to be each other's text. To what end, then, this inspiration? If the third part of the sentence is to live with purpose, that perhaps begins to answer the question. Inspiration is not only so that we are filled with beauty and wonder, Unitarian Universalism, <clears throat> after all, is often thought of as a religion of action, creating change in the world, building a more just and beautiful place for us to inhabit. Now tomorrow, next Sunday, not tomorrow, I won't be here tomorrow, next Sunday as we explore living with purpose, we'll explore too the double-edged sword in that impulse toward action. But for now, perhaps, we can sit in the center of the phrase. The reason we come to church, as A. Powell Davies told us, as you all shared, the inspiration we find when we open ourselves up to be each other's text. This summer, I have been reading and reading and reading. And one of my favorite books is A Psalm for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers. Go find it if you haven't read it yet. It's beautiful and lyrical and about the best distillation of Unitarian Universalism set in a futuristic world with robots that live in the woods you can possibly find. <laughs> There is a religion throughout the world in this book. And one of the two characters in the book talks about what it means. The gods, this character says, provide inspiration, not intervention. If we want change or good fortune, we have to create it for ourselves. And that's what I learned in the shrine. I thought, wow, you know, a cup of tea may not be the most important thing in the world, or a steam bath, or a pretty garden. They're so superfluous in the grand scheme of things. But the people who did actually important work, building, feeding, teaching, healing, they all came to the shrine. It was the little nudge that helped important things get done. A. Powell Davies came to the shrine. You have come to the shrine. Our children, brought perhaps by ice cream, come to the shrine. Together, we not only find inspiration, friends. I believe that we create it with the texts of our lives 
held in the sanctuary, in the shrine that we build every Sunday. I invite you now to join in singing one of those things we come to church to do. Will you rise in body or in spirit? Will you rise in voice to sing hymn number 298, Wake Now My Senses? We will sing together all the verses so we get all the inspiration. Wake now my senses and hear the earth call. Feel the deep power of being in all. Keep with the web of creation your vow. Giving, receiving as love shows us how. Wake now, my reason, reach out to the new. Join with each pilgrim who quests for the true. Honor the beauty and wisdom of time. Suffer thy limit and praise the sublime. Wake now, compassion, give heed to the cry. Voices of suffering fill the white sky. Take as your neighbor both stranger and friend, praying and striving their hardship to Now my conscience with justice thy guide. Join with all people whose rights are denied. Take not for granted a privileged place. God's love embraces the whole human. Wake now my vision of ministry clear. Brighten my pathway with radiance here. Mingle my calling with all who will share. Work toward a planet transformed by If we are each other's texts, my friend, surely we are each other's readers. May we open our hearts to read and be read. May we find and create inspiration wherever we go. May it be so. Amen.